Welcome back to Combat Sports Weekly. This is the round table. Two familiar guests. You guys know the drill. Let's get it started. Round table. Introducing first, from 610 the Sports Animal, ring announcer. You do it all, man, in the combat sports community. James hey, Lindemuth. Yep, just a huge fan of the sport, so anything, any way I can get my hands on it. Yeah. Um, Thursday, 5.35 on uh, 610 if you want to tune in for our boxing and MMA segment. Yeah. To the right of him, also a big combat sports fan, blogger, reporter, Michael Frankel. Welcome back, man. Glad to be here. Let's talk. Yeah, let's chat. I mean, it was a pretty interesting weekend, uh, despite the fact it's supposed to be one of the biggest fights of the year. We'll jump right into the first topic, Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. I think I wanted an average fight to come out of this. I got a slightly below average fight. James, what did you think? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm guilty as everybody else that, you know, I got myself wrapped up in it. And, and that's just because I'm, I'm a fan first. And then, you know, I, I talk about it on, you know, radio and television second, you know. So I, I got wrapped up in it. And I really thought that there was going to be a little more action to it. And, and I, I kick myself now <laughs> for expecting it. You know, the, I'm not disappointed at all in Floyd Mayweather. And he's been getting beat up in, mm -hmm. the, in the media and everything. I, I, I knew that's what he was going to do. That's what, if you've ever watched him fight before, what else did you expect? He's not just going to run out there and walk to the center of the cage and just start throwing. You know, that's just not who he is or how he fights. Pacquiao, I was disappointed. You know, I mean, I think he, and, and everybody talked about it, he had to have been a volume puncher in order to have a chance to win that fight. Yeah. And when he did actually manage to track Mayweather down and pin him, he'd throw one or two punches and then back out. You know, that you're not going to beat Floyd that way. You're just not. I mean, when you get him pinned, you've got to throw 30, 40, 50 punches, you know. Even if you only land nine or ten of them, still, you know, you got to. So I was disappointed in, in Pacquiao's effort. And it started with the with the walkout, you know, the, this <laughs> taking selfies with Freddie Rose and the, and the smiling. Uh, he certainly didn't look like he was going to go participate in the fight of the century, that's for sure. What was more weird, the selfie or the king being behind Floyd Mayweather? It, well, the king terrifies me, so that, that was weird for me. I've, I, ever since those commercials first came out, I've been terrified yeah. of, that, of that guy. <laughs> so I, the minute he came on, I went to, I, I got the, to hit the fridge and got myself a cold one, yeah. you know. Mike, Micah, what does this do to the casual fan who tuned into this fight? They're talking that almost, or pass, it's supposed to surpass 4 million pay-per-view buys. What does that do to future pay-per-views for boxing? Okay, so this is the biggest fight ever because financially it'll prove to be a success through all that, but now it's just a buyer beware and it's gonna be that label that when someone says to you, you gonna order the next fight? No, man, I got robbed by Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> they promised us the fight. They delivered a boxing match and it's less than what people were expecting. The hype was too much for them to be able to live up to and it hurts the gaining fans. It's the fight that could save boxing or could add another nail and look like it added a nail because of everyone <laughs> wanting to sue them now. Now on the contrary, how does this help MMA? This helps MMA because one, how many fights were on that pay-per-view, Jorge? Three. Okay, there were three? Yes. Those other four guys never even got a name mentioned <laughs> until that night, right? <laughs> UFC, you got five fights usually, that's 10 people, so you're promoting a card instead of putting it all one main event and then having a nice surprise when you get there, like, oh, these guys who unjustifiably never got any name recognition yeah. at all. So this helps MMA because they have bigger cards, they put more out there, prelims are out there, and a lot more MMA bouts turn into fights than boxing match turn boxing matches turning into fights. Well, and they did themselves a huge disservice by only showing two of the undercard fights because they had a very unique opportunity to even with the way that the main event went, and it was going to go that way no matter what. But boxing, the promoters had a unique opportunity to to stack that undercard and and get some of those casual fans that maybe haven't bought that pay per view in a while. To, to leave that night going, well, the main event wasn't what I expected, but man, that undercard was good. Yeah. You know, I will order the next one. Yeah. And they just, they totally missed out on that opportunity. Yeah, we'll get your, we'll be a little quicker with this other topic, so get your thoughts. Uh, John Jones's manager tells Ariel Hawani in the MMA Hour that he might, we may have seen the last of John Jones in the UFC. Your thoughts? I think it's, I think it's awesome. I think that it's good that his manager's coming out. And what I really liked about what he said is that it's John Jones taking some time to take care of John Jones. At the end of the day, he, yes, he's a fighter, but he also apparently has a substance abuse problem and has some, some issues going on in his life that need to get cleaned up because there's got a, there's life after the octagon, obviously, especially with, with cage fighting. You want to have your, you know, have your life in order when, when you decide to hang those, those gloves up. So I love it. If, if we don't ever see him again in, in the octagon because he got his life in order, I'm all for it. Yeah. Micah? 
same sentiments. It's really up to John. If he's in the right state of mind after he deals with his own demons and also the legal issue, if he wants to come back and fight, that's that's great. Love to see him back. If he doesn't, hope he's just in a better place. I mean, all we can look at is say, we got to watch history. We got to watch a legend and a really young one. And yeah. it's a sad story that hopefully it just doesn't turn out worse. Yeah, and I want to, I guess, turn now the page to the final topic. Two events going on the same night within three miles of each other. Of course, I'm talking about the two events going on at Buffalo Thunder. It sounds like you guys are both going to two different events. <laughs> what do you think of this happening with the TakeOver and Rumble at the Rock happening just two miles at the same exact time? It's a, it's a bit of a head scratcher, yeah. um, in my opinion, especially because the the two promoters of I mean, you know, Pat Holmes and then the the promoter from Camel uh, the, the fights at Camel Rock, they know each other, they're like, and they're they're in communication. So there's no way this was like, oh man, you know, you you booked that date too. So <laughs> so I I don't understand it personally, but you know, at least you know you're going to one and I'll go to the other and we'll have yeah, all we, our bases we'll get a, covered. We'll get a recap from both of you guys <laughs> on those, Micah. What do you think? It's it's weird. I, I know we. I guess have it more on a national scale with UFC where there's a local MMA fight, a national one, but it, it's the two rarely compete. So what do you think about, of it happening with boxing? This is locally? awful because <laughs> boxing needs, you know, you need to help an event. And if the, the promoters just knowing each other, going against each other, you're taking a fan base and splitting it in half and making them choose. And you're putting good fighters on both cards. And it's not right to make the fans do that. If one event just would have been pushed back a month, either one would have done a it. A week even. Uh, yeah, know, they could have done matter. a lot more. And then also with a lot of this. Both promoters have only put out their corners. I know all the fighters in the red corner for both events, but opponents have been hard to be named, and both promoters are a little skeptical on it. So because they seem to be both forcing each other in this, it's just a weird atmosphere, and it's not helping anyone. And, you know, selling it off of come watch these great matchups, but they haven't announced any matchups. We know there's some fights. We know there's title fights, but we don't know who the opponents are. It's a very so, weird situation. So if Pat Holmes needs a fill-in, you know, for one of his cars. Does he just drive three miles they, yeah, down they the can, road and they can combine throw the cars. cash at some guy? <laughs> I mean, hey, 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 come on. You know, you know that's an interesting solution. <laughs> but either way, it's I hope we avoid this in the future just because, the, especially for the local community, especially if one is hardcore as New Mexico, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be dividing the fans. No. But either way, there should is be... Is the Santa Fe Española area really big enough for take, yeah. us to take all the fan base and divide it in half and in pull two. it right. Yeah, like that. definitely. But one of our own Jody Esquibels on, on the takeover and, of course, Two entertaining fighters, Tony Valdez and, you know, Angelo Leo and that other one. So. Well, when Jody wins her belt, you can hear us cheering three miles. Down. Yeah, well, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hopefully it'll be displayed here the next time she yeah. actually comes out. But go. that'll do it, guys. It'll Thank you very much for coming. Party. Enjoy the fights. We hope to get a recap from both of you guys on each of the events. But nonetheless, to you guys, enjoy the fights. See you next week.